All right, folks. Now this will take a while, but instead of doing a long ass video on all the Japanese tank destroyers individually, I decided to summarize and put into a general perspective of all their stats, all their playstyles, and a basic research on all the pathway you should take when playing the new Japanese tank destroyers. So this will be a quick summary, hopefully. But if you are interested in any particular vehicle, I still recommend you try out on the test server because how would you know right? So basically the module research is relatively easy, one gun, one engine, one track to research. Most engine upgrades are weighing about the same so no need to worry about the tracks, holding the engine, holding the gun, and holding your equipment. And stock tracks are relatively the cheapest compared to the gun, the engine as well so that's nice. Radio is shared on the heavy tanks and the medium tanks. And it is pretty simple, which means the only thing you have to worry about is researching the vehicle upcoming afterwards. So only one gun, one engine, one radio, radio shared, and one track. So what this means is basically blueprints are more worthwhile on these vehicles, similar to the Chinese rocket heavy tanks. Less modules to research, which means more research needed or more XP needed on the next vehicle compared to something like a E50 per se. So E50 to E50M, you have to research a lot of stuff. A lot of guns, a lot of turrets, radios, engines. So basically, if you can see on the actual tech tree, jumping from the tier 9 to the tier 10, it's about 220-ish thousand XP. Compare this to the E50, and that is only about 180,000 or so. So that's the module to the actual vehicle cost. Therefore, more modules means less vehicle cost. So on this line, therefore blueprints are more worthwhile since they're worth more per part of the blueprint package thing. All right, so I'll put the list of the rating right here, but let's jump through all the stats. So basically firepower wise, they're pretty average per tier, not the strongest, but not the worst. So it's not a rapid firing gun, it's not a high alpha gun, they're in the middle of the pack. DPM is about average other than tier 7 for the Cheeto SPG, which is about the same as the Yak Panther with the 105. It's called 100mm, it's very similar to the 105 on the Yak Panther. And they have pretty good DPM, about the same too. Penetration is also about the same, which is nice, accuracy also pretty good. Aim time's a little bit longer, but that's fine. So that is the only outlier for DPM. So there are tank destroyers, but they're not crazy like the E25s or ISU-130s or 122s in a sense, but average-ish. Dispersion is average plus, which is a little bit better than the average, but not as crazy as you would think. So moving while shooting is alright, but don't do it most of the time. Aim time is okay for most of the large caliber guns. At best, it's 1.9 seconds on tier 7s, tier 6, tier 8s, and at the higher end, at tier 10, it's about 2.7, but 2.4 or 2.4 for a 149mm at tier 10 is not that bad. Accuracy is also pretty decent overall, 0.33 to 0.34. Shell velocity is not the fastest for AP round, and it's better. It's not the worst, but it's better than the Chinese tank destroyers at about 760-ish meters per second. So you still have to lead your shot, but it's not as bad. So I don't know if it's sniping is a reliable source for these vehicles, but it's still better at sniping than Chinese tank destroyers. Gold shell is an AP shell with more pen and slightly faster velocity, but it's AP. So better normalization than APCR, just not as fast. High explosive is average. Shell capacity is about 40 rounds, which is alright, so don't spam too much, but you have enough. Gun arcs, average, 10 degrees usually about per side, and about 7 degrees of gun depression except for lower tiers. Shell cost is also about the same, but it's like with the recent Minotauros, where you have cheaper shells at lower tiers, and more expensive at higher tiers. So the outlier is at tier 7, which is also pretty interesting. So basically for the 105, you have 560 for 320 alpha. Not bad, right? 
but compare this to the Yak Panther, and this is actually about half the cost almost for the same Alpha. So the most premium aspects of the whole line belongs to the Tier 7. So that is pretty interesting. Let's compare with the 105 on the American. Yeah, it's about half the cost, about, for the same Alpha. Surprising, right? Which other one is a 105 at tier... This thing has a 105, right? Yep. Half the cost, compared to the T28 concept. This thing is a 100mm with a little bit less Alpha, but still about cheaper <laughs> than the 100mm on the AMX. So this, this is the actual one compared to the rest of the line. So tier 7 is more like a premium in terms of shell cost compared to tier 10 or tier 8 of course but let's quickly compare to tier 10 for 700 alpha it costs 2000 compare this with a grill 15 yeah it costs more <laughs> it costs more like 25 25% more or 33 30 ish percent more for just 50 less alpha holy yeah it's not more Worthwhile playing at high tier, similar to the Minotauros for some reason. Yeah, Minotauros have a high cost too. For 3 or for 530 ish, it costs still. Remember, that's the same cost. 1600 is the same cost as 700, 750 on the Grill 15, but the Minotauro only deals 530. So they have a more expensive show cost for some reason. <laughs> So, alright, fine, whatever. Mobility wise, at best, 40 ish kilometers per hour top speed. At worst, 30. 30 belongs to the tier 8. So, bleh, they're not fast. But reverse speed is alright, 15 to 18. So, you get 18 on the tier 10, which is not bad. Horsepower per ton is usually about 15 or so. So, it's okay. It's like a fat medium tank to rev up. But tier 6 is the outlier. And tier 6 has only 9 horsepower per ton ratio. That is that is not good. <laughs> Effective top speed on hard is only about 28 kilometers per hour. And about 14 <laughs> on soft terrain. So you won't reach the 40-ish kilometers per hour top speed. You won't reach that. You only reach like 20-ish something. So it's slow and it has no armor. Tier 6 is kind of rough. <laughs> kind of. And terrain resistance, usually about 1 for hard, 1.25 for medium, and 2.3 for soft. So, like a freaking medium tank-ish, fat medium tank. Not as good as the Russian mediums at about 0 0.7 and 0 0.9 and 1.4 in terms of stats. So, yeah, fat medium tank. Armor is only good on superstructures. They're still flat. And doesn't apply to lower tiers, obviously. Easily, easily penetrable side armor at only about 50-ish. <laughs> oh, hall sides. And hall armor at the front are still pretty much garbage. Already took a look with a glimpse of these vehicles, but... God, they suck. <laughs> you already know. For the tier 10, the frontal hall armor is about 200mm effective. Actually 180, 190-ish. It's not good. It's a slope 100mm. You can get that from a freaking medium tank. <laughs> like a T44 or T54. No, it's, it's garbage. <laughs> Terrible. You have good superstructure, but they're flat at 300. So gold shell will still go through. And you have some parts of the mantlet which are weak too. Only 56. Questionable, right? Yeah, these armors are not good for assault guns. So you could be... Haul down at about 300 meters, or I wouldn't say 200 or less, but yeah, you could provide some cover to your heavy tanks while haul down at a distance, but these are not assault guns. These are not. Only 50 or 45 at this little lip, but you'll likely overmatch with large caliber guns or just penetrate the 45 right here. <laughs> 120 right here. Ugh. Yeah, these armors are pretty, pretty crap. <laughs> so they have still weak spots on lower tiers like the Commander Cupola and range finders and stuff, but 100 for the Commander Cupola. And this is only 50. Ugh. <laughs> Terrible. 
So these are not assault guns. These will provide some protection at a distance, but don't rely on it. Definitely don't rely on it. Not even close. And that 250 for tier 7 is not bad, but yeah. You still have a commander cupola. That's pretty big. Upper plate is actually about 281. Not bad. This is actually better <laughs> than the tier 10. <laughs> I'm on a tier 7. Oh, God. So armor wise, don't depend on the armor. They stay they, not that good. <laughs> and about 35 to 40 on the roof and engine decks. And these are pretty big vehicles, right? So don't get shot by artillery. That sucks. Commander Cupola weak spots. Yeah. Health is average plus, which is nice. Not the greatest, like a heavy tank, but they're a little bit above average. So basically, if it's 1000 health average for a tier 8 tank destroyer, these usually have about 1400. So a little bit above average, but not as high as a heavy tank. Surprisingly higher engine health, module health wise. It's at 360 for the higher tiers. So basically you don't have a damaged engine as frequently as other tanks, surprisingly. So compare this to like a Yak Tiger. You have higher engine health by 100 hit points. So it is based on module damage from calibers, but so you're less you're less likely to get engine damage, which is surprising, all right? Weight is actually average plus, and some of these vehicles weigh like 70-ish tons, <laughs> 80 tons. So don't go ramming these vehicles. Bad idea. Just don't ram Japanese heavy tanks or tank destroyers for that matter, but yeah, 45-ish tons at tier 8. It's, uh, it's not bad, but yeah, higher tiers, higher weight. Camo is about 17% at lower tiers to about 12% while stationary. Uh, I mean, it's like a f medium tanks to fat medium tanks, practically. So, not the best camo, as expected, out of something that huge. View range is actually average plus, about 10 meters more per tier, which is good. And a full six-man crew with two loaders to take advantage of the new crew skills. But overall... Alright, let's just go through each and every tier. Tier 5 is like a martyr. The Honi, Miso Honi. <laughs> it's like a martyr-ish based on the Chini chassis from tier 2 or tier 3, but it's a 75mm? 75mm. I mean, penetration is alright. It's like a Stug at 150. And overall, decent accuracy, good aim time. Just not the fastest in terms of speed. It's all right. It's at 40 ish kilometers per hour and 16 horsepower per time ratio. View range is kind of low, but then again, it's a low tier tank destroyer. It's like a it's like a 5.5. Actually, it's not bad. I mean, with the with the rapid firing gun at about 2,000 dpm, with that accuracy, that aim time. Downside to it is, I say ammo capacity, but shell velocity is all right. I would say maybe a six, based on the based on the actual accuracy and the penetration. 150 at tier five is pretty good. It's okay enough. Tier six, slow, <laughs> definitely slow. Not bad accuracy, not bad, not bad aim time. Penetration is all right. It's a 105. Yeah, it's like a 105 compared to the Dicker Max or. Uh, why should I have 105? Is it? That is a weird caliber at tier 6. Usually they have 122s. The ARL has a 100 or so? Let's see, let me see the ARL. Actually, it's only a 90 or so. Long ass barrel 90 millimeter. Pretty much. Yeah, 90. Oof. Alright, Dicker Max is likely the close. Yeah, 300 alpha. Uh, about the same DPM. Better accuracy while moving. That's good. You carry more, <laughs> more rounds and it flies faster. Downside to this is the horsepower per time ratio suck. Yeah, this thing is slow. And it has no armor, so it cannot be a tortoise or a turtle, whatever. Um, I'm worried about the speed, especially for no armor vehicles. The speed is kind of what kills it. I mean, it's a good gun, but you're not going to use it for long if you get spotted. Or if you get spotted, you won't run away fast enough. So this is like a four. 
the, the gun's good, but you're you're getting wrecked if you're being spotted. So, and you're slow to the party too. It's like a four out of ten. <laughs> All right, Cheeto SBG. Um, this might be the best out of all of them. I mean, health is above average for a tier 7. That is pretty good. 1,000 health. That is about the same as a tier 8 non-armored tank destroyer. So that is a good health. Accuracy is not bad. DPM is high. And what I already mentioned about the shot cost, this one is actually one of the better ones. So this might be, uh, I want to say it's more than, this is more like 5.5 .5 when I think about it. This is like a 6. 6 point five it's better than the average slightly better but uh, yeah it's uh, is it the most fun out of the whole line that's a question I mean yeah holy crap this is actually pretty big too <laughs> on the tier six it's not a small tank yeah it might be yeah 6.25 is good enough for tier seven all right tier eight the Hori Type 2, originally the Type 1, confusing name, yada yada. Um, it, the top speed is questionable, only 30. Health is alright, but not as crazy as a Fernand, I think. Fernand has 1500 or so. Uh, just compare this to a Fernand, why not? <laughs> yeah, 1500 for the Fernand. Doesn't have the punch of the Fernand. It's only 400 for the 120? 120. It doesn't have the Fernand's DPM. It has better moving dispersion, but not as good turning the gun. And it doesn't have the module damage, obviously. Carries more rounds, but slightly faster than Fernand, which is nice. So you do rev up to 30, but that is max. You don't go over like 40 or something. Ugh. I mean, the gun's okay, just the DPM suck. <laughs> DPM really sucks on this gigantic cheery. <laughs> In a sense, um, crap. I mean, if it has the premium tank gun, the 127, yeah, that would be a lot better on the Kari, but this one is, uh, I mean, I don't know how the hell, maybe uh, 5.25 or something. It's, it's pretty bland. It is pretty average. Nothing to really write home about. Not that good. All right, compared to the Yag Tiger for the tier 9. Less DPM, <laughs> longer reload, more you have more alpha, but not as good accuracy or aim time. Wow, Yak Tiger has 2.2 seconds? That's pretty good. Shell velocity is a little bit slower. It's a bigger caliber, but... Uh, yeah, shell costs also a little bit more expensive. 50% more for only 100 more alpha. Yeah, it's also slower than Yak Tiger with the same terrain resistance. Health is nice. Wow, Yak Tiger has so much health. 2,100. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this is like a 5. I don't feel... They don't have armor. That's the point. They don't have armor. They're pretty bleh. And it's rear mounted too. So you have a gigantic ass engine deck to get shot at. Ugh. Yeah, it's it's like a freaking Japanese Fernand. <laughs> Just shoot the freaking hull front. Fernand has 200mm at the hull front, which is pretty decent. This doesn't. This has only like what? 100? 120? 150? Ugh. And tier 10. Ugh. How the hell do I rate this thing? It's cr Well, the gun is surprisingly accurate while moving. It's not that bad in aim time. And accuracy is also decent enough, but compare this to a Yak Panzer E100. Yeah, it's 700 alpha cannot match up to the 1000 alpha. Same goes with the uh, I'll just pay you high explosive anti tank at 420 millimeters. Yeah, the Yak Panzer E100 has one of the highest pen gold shell in the game compared to 360, but you do have more DPM, so that's a plus. You also go faster and effectively faster traverse. But this thing doesn't have armor. <laughs> it doesn't really. Yak Panzer E100 weighs about twice as much. <laughs> and only 3% camouflage rating. Oh god. It it feels lackluster for in tier, the end game of the Japanese tank destroyers with such mediocre stats, right? It feels really lackluster. Just feels bland. 4.5. 
So overall, the whole line is... Freaking... It's nice, it's not exciting to play. Definitely. There's no new uh, mechanics or gimmicks. There's no hydro-pneumatic suspension or double tracks or double shots or whatever the hell. Nothing really exciting, right? To go down the whole line. The Japanese heavy tanks have their style of being super big piñatas. That is not that menacing if you don't have gold shell. <laughs> so if you're playing against some scrubs without gold shell, yeah, Japanese heavy tanks are pretty interesting, but everybody spams gold. Japanese medium tanks are interesting, mostly because of the SDB is pretty good, right? But yeah, these tank destroyers feels pretty bland. I mean, even with the Chinese rocket tanks, yeah, they're they're not that good with the commander cupola weak spots and stuff, right? But it surprised you with the rocket boosters ramming you for some damage. Out of the blue, right? It is surprising. And the gun's alright. I mean, you don't have to grind that much compared to other tanks. Or the heavy tanks and stuff. So, surprising. But you have a weird weird gimmick that might be interesting. Whereas the Japanese tank destroyers are... It feels like the Chinese tank destroyers too. Chinese tank destroyers are pretty crap too. I mean, their shot velocity is low. As well as they have only armor on the superstructure. No armor on the lower plate. And some of them even have Commander Cupola weak spots, like for example the tier 10. That's a that's a weak spot, negating your entire armor. Yeah, your armor's good, about 300 plus for the superstructure, about 280, fine, 280 or so. But you have a Commander Cupola weak spot, you just shoot the weak spot or shoot the lower plate. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Terrible. So overall, I would say Japanese tank destroyers are. <sighs> I would say 4.75. <laughs> it's it's not exciting. I mean, with the Minotauros, you'll have a better time, right? With the recently introduced Minotauros, you'll have a slightly better time with the interesting autoloader mechanic or any other tank destroyers recently introduced. Holy crap, we haven't had a tank destroyer line for a while. I mean, we originally thought the, the Czech tank destroyer line were coming with the ship TVP-100, but... Holy crap! Is this the first tank destroyer line in a while? For us? Holy crap! I mean, we usually have medium tanks or heavy tanks. Other than the Minotauros. Holy crap, what was, what was the tank destroyer line before the Minotauros? Like Swedish? S tanks? Or Chinese tank destroyers? Which one's later? Chinese tank destroyers. Yeah, they're pretty crap. Oh, there you go, folks. 4.75 for the whole line. The best tank, tier 7. Tier 7 is pretty much the best one, in my opinion. Yeah, you have the gold shell advantage, or the gold cost, or shell cost advantage. You have the DPM. You're not that slow. And you have some armor to work with. So the best one, tier 7. The worst one, I feel you have a worse time at tier 6, but the tier 10 feels the most la uh, lackluster most disappointing at tier 10. So tier 6 and tier 10, pretty much tied. Oh, there we go, folks. A quick summary of the Japanese tank destroyers. Very quick. So do try them out on the test server, right? If you don't know, then obviously you cannot judge them. But yeah, they're, they're not that great. <laughs> they're not that great. Not that exciting. But hey, quantity over quality. We're getting three lines this year. So we'll have to see if the Japanese heavy tanks, the new heavy tanks, will be worthwhile. But yeah, they'll pretty much for certain be better than the actual first line of Japanese heavies. <laughs> Without the armor buff. Yeah, these heavy tanks have been outclassed for millennia. <laughs> so the new heavy tanks will be pretty much more exciting, hopefully. They're like larger STBs, in a sense. But that'll be nice. Oh, there are folks. As always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.